Hello, everybody. It's time for episode 215 of the Three Point Podcast, presented by Memorial Healthcare, home of the now Community Wellness Center. Well, the NFL had their draft, and the Lions appear to have made the right moves. We'll give out our grades and also get caught up on all sports important to us from our three different views. I also want to thank our partners, Crow Real Estate and Auction, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill, Success Group Mortgage and Servicing, The Wash of Owasso, the ALS Association of Michigan, and was, <coughs> excuse me, I want to send out a big welcome to AZ Printing and Tony Nash for hopping on board and uh, becoming another great partner of ours. You know, we continue to grow, guys, and uh, it's just great when we get new sponsors on board. You're you're like uh, the Wolf of Wall Street in that right now, man, selling these uh, these ad deals on this pod. You're, you're, you're on a hot streak right now. I'm loving it. Hey, hey, got to do something for it, right? <laughs> we all we all use our professional expertise on this podcast, you know, whether it's editing or sports commentary. Ted did sales his whole life, so it only yep. makes sense to be like, hey, go out and you know get us some new partners and sponsors. So no, that's been, that's cool. Sign on a sign on the dotted line. That's what it's all about. <laughs> well, we'll get the we'll get the pod going right after this. All right, so as you guys know, um, I'm in the Detroit area. Actually, I'm in the midst of looking to move downtown right now, uh, now that Ooh. I got a little more job stability and that sort of thing. But with that, and living in this area, I mean, the traffic. Goddamn, the traffic <laughs> is so freaking bad, man. It's bad anywhere. You know, there, it seems like there's road construction all over, you know, whether you're in Owasso or you're in Lansing or you're in Detroit. It seems like there's always this road construction going on uh, th- at this time of year, but I just, there's one specific idiot that really kind of irritated me the other day. So I was driving to work and right before I got on the, you know, the on-ramp to get, uh, to get on the highway, this guy like did like a swerve in front of me to basically cut me off and make sure he got on the highway, which I, I mean, I get it. Sometimes you miss your turn or whatever. That didn't really irritate me. What irritated me was as he got over, he like hit this big old piece of metal on the road and this piece of metal flies back and smokes the front of my car. And I'm just driving. Like, I can't see it. I'm on the highway. It's not, I'm not going to pull over and check it. Basically, I'm just like, man, hopefully that didn't just, it smoked my car. When I say it smoked it, it smoked it. So I'm just thinking like, okay, hopefully it didn't just take like a big old dent out of the front of my car. So we're driving. I'm kind of keeping my eye on this guy's like little Equinox. Uh, We're basically driving alongside each other on the highway here. I'm kind of pissed. You know, sure enough, we hit the usual traffic, you know, rush hour traffic. And this guy is just cracking me up. I hate people like this. They are the reason that these traffic jams take 20 minutes longer than they should. Where he's like in one lane and he's like basically the whole time we're in traffic, he's trying to like zip in in and, in and out like of each lane to try and yeah. like basically get to basically what save like 30 seconds off of his freaking traffic trip. And this guy is constantly cutting people off, cutting in front of me. I'm like watching him from a car to back. And we're kind of playing this like little funny game where it's like, (laughs) I'm like going past him and I'm kind of laughing to myself as I'm, as my lane is starting to pick up speed. Then he's like cutting past back me because his lane's now starting to speed up. Then he's cutting in front of me and then I'm getting over and then his lane's going fast and then I'm going past him. And I just don't know. Is that something you guys deal with a lot? Are these freaking like road psychos? I've noticed this since I've moved here. The road rage is it's <laughs> unbelievable. The amount of road rage you deal with. Like I literally pulled it like this girl, like let me in. This is no joke. This girl let me in uh, to like a right turn lane the other day. As soon as I got in, she like, as soon as she let me in and I got in front of her, she like slammed on her horn. And it was like, I could see her in my rear, rear view mirror, like freaking out. And I was on the phone with my buddy. I'm like, I was like laughing. I was like, dude, this girl's losing her mind behind me over letting me in. And I don't know. I mean, this is a great area. I love living in, you know, highly populated area like this. But the the roads and the traffic and the, the especially the road rage, it, it's overboard, man. No, it, at the way you're describing it, at, you know, the road rage is kind of funny because everyone always says like, well, not everyone. Some people admit to having road rage, but you know, it seems like it's one of those things. A lot of people say like they don't, but then they get on the road and if they get cut off, they're the ones screaming, flipping the bird. But the one thing too, I always think about, so I, you know, I've, not that I've lived all over the world, but having lived in Connecticut and then now down in Charlotte, I've noticed that everywhere. And then in Michigan, obviously over at Grand Rapids and stuff, people always say that like, 
wherever they're living, the drivers there are the worst. Or if they live somewhere else, the drivers there are the worst. Like everyone in around Connecticut says mass holes. People from Massachusetts <laughs> are the worst drivers in the world. And yep. people down here say that people in Charlotte are the worst drivers in the world. I remember. So now you're telling stories about people around Detroit are the worst drivers in the world. So maybe just overall, people are just bad drivers everywhere. Like you're always going to get people who are pushy. You're always going to get people who, like you said, in the bad traffic are trying to zip in and out, trying to save a few, but then you see them way back because they're just holding up traffic. I think it's always one of those things. If everyone just is patient on the road, you know, and does what, does what you're kind of supposed to do, quote unquote, supposed to do, you know, traffic moves, you know, nice and easy, but yeah, well, that's it, it, the tra- traffic can get crazy though. That's the key. I mean, I, I, in my many, many years of driving, I just, do you not understand road rage? I really don't. I mean, <laughs> I think I think people need to mellow out and slow down a little bit. And, you know, I'm one of these guys, and you guys know it, I'm pretty well organized. If I have to be somewhere at 10 o'clock, I have in my mind plotted plenty of time to be there on time. And these people that flip you off because of whatever you're doing driving, just they're in some sort of hurry because they're late because they messed up their schedule. You know, right. it's that it's that simple. And then also I want to throw out here because it's interesting when I listen to Jared talk about his driving, that cracks me up just to begin with, because I'll, I'll play Uncle Ted as a proxy for mom and dad for you, Jared. The key you just said, you're in you're in Detroit traffic and you're on the phone with your buddies. Now, what, what the heck? Concentrate on driving, man, because when you're <laughs> when you're in a city, you, here's here's my philosophy. You you know, I'm usually a pretty mellow driver. But when, when I do get into a city and get into that kind of traffic, you do got to be pretty aggressive and you got to be on your toes. You know, if you're if you're lollygagging or, or you know, going in and out of traffic, you're, you're just asking for trouble and a double trouble if you're on the phone. It's hands free calling. Uh, hey, I, I never stop working, man. You know, got to got to make the business calls. Got to got to make the calls to friends. Uh, if I'm going to be in, if I'm going to be driving for an hour every day. I'm not going to pull you and just throw on, you know, Sirius XM Yacht Rock and <laughs> shut the brain off. So, sorry, I'm not, I don't operate that same way. But no, I, that's a fair point. It's, but it's, it's, I'm sitting in traffic, man. It's, yeah. Then we're moving a mile a minute. I will say, I, admittedly, and I, not necessarily proud of it, not, not unproud. I don't know what, it's just today's world, I guess. I do use my phone probably more than I should when I'm driving. Uh, my, my wife sometimes says like, you know, especially if the kids are in the car, you know, she might point out like, Got a baby you know, on board. right. Why don't you put the phone away? And I always jokingly, but I do kind of believe it. I trust myself. Like if I'm like having to do something quick on my phone while driving more than like, no offense, Ted, someone of like the older generation who still is like texting with like their fingers and stuff. It's like, I can do something pretty quick on my phone and, you know, then get it done. It's probably still not smart to do it while driving. And to that point, a lot of times, if you see that car that keeps like going over the line, doing stupid stuff, swerving fast, then slow, fast and slow. If you get up next to them, almost the majority of the time they're on their phone, you know, Mm -hmm. So, and, and then it, I feel like, I feel like I'm like, get, get into that age of like, get off my lawn. Cause I see them on their phone and I, I want to be like, get off your phone. But then I think about it and I'm probably on my phone. So yeah. the one, it, the one thing I will say is I always, the, the people down here, when, when I hear people say like that move from New York or Michigan or wherever, and they're like, oh, the, the one hint of weather down here and people have no idea what they're doing when they're on the roads. That is true. Yeah. But it's like if you never grew up driving in snow, you're just not used to it. It is funny when when there's one little ounce of weather, even rain, like like if it's like a heavy rain, I do get it. Not road rage. I do get a little impatient because people will be like driving 10 miles an hour just because there's like a little sprinkle of snow coming down. And, you know, I still have my like Michigan blood in me, I guess I'm like. All right, you can go. You can go. You don't need to be driving like a maniac, but it's just a little weather. You're going to be okay. But, you know, they they didn't grow up driving in blizzards and stuff like we did. So, you know, you have to have to remember that stuff. No. I, yeah, I do not. I do not text and, and drive. I, you know, it's all hands free, Ted, just for you. 
Um, one thing I do remember that kind of cracks me up from, and here's why I don't drive uh, in text. I remember when I was like in high school, they brought in like this, uh, basically like a scare you straight type, like dr- like driving, like mm-hmm. uh, in texting like type guy. And he had like this little like video, like almost like an arcade like car video game where you're supposed to like practice like basically like it's impossible to text and drive. And you have like a little fake phone, like they're supposed to text somebody and then like drive it. And I remember it was like literally impossible. It was like basically you're trying to control this car as if it's going like 300 miles an hour while texting. And I and I remember thinking like, oh my god, dude, how do people like text and drive? It seems impossible. And then I get in the car and I, you know, I, everybody's done it from time to time, and it's literally not hard. So yeah. I just I just throw it. It's just funny for anyone listening who hasn't driven yet, and you think like driving and texting is impossible. Let me be a bad influence. It's really not that hard. Yeah, full disclosure. I mean, there's been periods where I've, you know, answered a text with a a short few words and I've talked on my phone. I drive too. I guess my main point I was trying to bring up, it just seems like there's a trend here, Jared, and (laughs) your luck driving. I mean, you never finished the story. How much damage was done? No, no damage. Yeah, I was thinking about that. No damage was done. There, I did nothing wrong in that. I literally, the guy whipped in front of me, shot a piece of metal back at my car. I'm lucky it didn't hit my windshield. Right. Uh, and then he was just cracking me up with his driving, like thinking he was Dale Earnhardt swerving in and out of these like traffic lanes. <laughs> so, and I was just getting a kick out of the fact that it was like, no matter how much driving this guy would do me sitting in the far left lane, I was still like from time to time, like gunning it past him. Now he eventually would come back and pass me, but, uh, it just was cracking me up. I will now, say you- quick one, one thing I've, I've heard people say, like, if they see, like I mentioned, you know, when you see. By the way, I was going to point out, Ted, I see that water bottle you got there. He gets all this swag and gear. We don't ever see it. Hey, I put it. I put in the work, man. I did the interview. I did the tour, so I get the swag. You did. That's so we, we should mention that maybe at the end of this segment, you can talk okay. about that quick little tour he took of the the, the wellness center. But Absolutely. You, I, I mentioned, you know, like if you see someone texting and you're like, oh, man, you know, you should get off your phone. I've heard people say like they will like drive up next to somebody and like you know give them the point or like say something like you need to put your phone down and i I always just think you're just adding to the problem because now you're taking your eyes off the road you're causing them to take their eyes off the road because you're trying to get their attention you're gonna piss each other off you're gonna cause road rage it's one of those things too sometimes i just think when you see that maniac driving on their phone or whatever's going on sometimes it's like just get by them or slow down yeah slow slow down let them get well ahead of you you know just don't it's not worth it. Like uh, it's, you know, that kind of stuff, but driving it, it is the, the traffic at Detroit area. I know is crazy, especially with the construction, the potholes and everything that goes on around, cool. around that area. The traffic around here in Charlotte is it's, it's gotta be comparable to like Atlanta or something because it's just such a growing uh, city. It's a growing area. And I don't think they were like prepared for how fast it's growing the roads i mean it's just constant they're trying to expand all the highways and stuff because the traffic is just out of control so it's, it's yeah. crazy i wanted ted I, I do you have something to add to that i wanted to ask you well yeah something. i was gonna say man shiawassee county the, the traffic here is unbearable it really is That's really a sar- sarcastic joke oh i was gonna say, <laughs> no. I was gonna say yeah, did, some, did something happen in the last 15 years no. that's what that's what cracks me up about people like ted you know he shits on my driving any chance he can get yeah it's not that hard to freaking navigate the one lane <laughs> m52 like it, it just it's just like it's a totally different world of driving out here uh one thing i just think is kind of funny is that i, I live on hayes road and if you look up Hayes Road on Google, it's literally like basically Hell Road because of the potholes. Like to the point where I bought brand new tires a couple months ago and I came home and there's a big old bulge. On oh. my so I had to buy a brand new one for 200 bucks. Ouch. I'm throwing money into a car. That's what that's what partially why I'm so dead set. I'm moving to Detroit. I'm done driving these long distances. And that's the root of it. I'm I was sure you're say, Jared. You're... I almost think you should like. I have some friends who've lived in New York and Washington D.C. and stuff, and they just don't own cars because of yeah. all the hassles and everything. They just Uber or taxi or you know bus or whatever. I almost think you should consider that with all the issues you have with <laughs> with your cars, sell God. that car and just budget <laughs> budget into your weekly spending. Ubers, just Uber everywhere. That's what's nuts, man, is I swear that's where every ounce of every penny I save, it just goes right into the bank of my gas tank and my car. 
so the, worst, re- it's the money pit. Before we get out of this segment, where are you looking to move? I mean, do you have any any uh, thoughts already? Uh, on, on basically, where- the three places I've kind of circled are Corktown. Mm-hmm. Almost just because I've heard there's a lot of great bars. That's where the old Tiger Stadium was. Yep. Uh, that seems like a great area. It's a growing neighborhood. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'll say this, like, I'm not moving into some, you know, 3,000 square foot. Like, I'm literally looking at, like, a studio apartment. That's mm-hmm. all I need. Um, Corktown, Midtown, another great little area. And then uh, another interesting one I found that had a lot of great little spots is uh, Mexican Town. So those yeah. three are kind of the, the big three I've circled. But, I mean, I'll go anywhere. I just want to be, you know, basically the goal is I want to be a two, three minute Uber drive from anywhere in the heart of Detroit. I want to go. So that's, the goal. you should, uh, you should hit up a friend of the podcast. We were talking about some partners, success group and mortgage, uh, Jim Woodworth. I know we all know him. He right. used to live around that area. I don't, I don't remember if he still yeah, has he lived like right estate. behind, right, right. Like I think like right behind Comerica park outfield, essentially looking over Comerica, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe reach out to him, see if he knows some some good spots or something to that. That's, but, that's just not a bad idea. Yep. Yeah. Or even his his brother Randy, I know, is big into real estate. They might actually have some connections or something. But I was gonna ask you guys before we move on from traffic and driving and everything. So my parents were just down recently for a visit. Uh, you know, come coming to see us, but mostly to come see the kids. And, you know, they were here for a few days. And one at one point I was talking to um my mom and dad. And they're they're getting to learn this area pretty well because they've they've lived in the or they've come and visited quite a bit. So they're getting to know, you know, they don't even need the maps and stuff to navigate around. I wanted to ask, this is like a generational thing. I, I bet I'll know Ted's answer and yours, Jared. So I was joking with my dad that, you know, ever since we moved here, we've been here over six years, and I'm just now really starting to like learn the roads and like to where like I don't necessarily need to turn on my maps because ever since we moved here, you know, I just, whether in the car or on my phone, I just put in where we're going and follow that. And it kind of makes it so you don't learn where you're actually going. You're just waiting for your phone or your navigation to say, turn left, turn right, you know, do all this. And my dad is definitely, he's, he's come around. They do in their travels, they do use, you know, Google maps or whatever, but he is still definitely, he wants to have a map. You know, he wants to have, (laughs) you know, a map in his car so he can, he knows where he's going. And, and I give him credit because he, I mean, he's got that sense of direction where he can just like figure it out one, one time. And he knows where he's going because he grew up, you know, following maps all the time. Are, are you guys like still, I bet Jared, you're all in on just using Google maps or whatever. Ted, do you, are you, are you changed over to use the navigation or are you still kind of like you look up where you're going and you, you know, you I'm, learn I'm kind of maps a high- or whatever. I'm kind of a hybrid, actually. You, you, you know, I respect your dad for still sticking with the maps. And there are times when I'll do a quick map quest or, or Google Maps on my computer just to kind of get a feel where I'm going. But uh, like I said, I'm a hybrid because I, I still have a uh, TomTom GPS. So I don't even use my phone. I just use the GPS. I st- I st- all. <laughs> no, it works good. It's the worst of both worlds. It saves my phone. <laughs> saves my phone. And I don't have to dink around with that. And what, what's worse? What's bad about it? <laughs> Those things are junk, man. <laughs> they are they are just flat out junk. They, they get, never really they... work right. They glitch. They <laughs> pain in the ass. You got to charge them all the time. I, they look stupid on your dashboard. It, no. I, it's not I on my dash. I don't understand that. Well, that it's, reasoning at it's, all. It's, yeah. it's not on my dash, number one. Number two, it's never, ever not worked for me. So I, your argument doesn't even make sense. <laughs> how, how often do you have to update it? Do you have to bring it inside the house and update it? You're supposed to once in a while, but I've wherever I go, <laughs> I've never had to really update it too often. No. I mean, it, it gets me it gets me exactly where I need to I go. You know those things are still around, man. So yeah, Well... Well, it's quite old. It's probably eight to, eight to ten years old. But I think they uh, still sell them, especially for maybe truckers or people yeah. who like travel a lot, so they're not on their phones all the time. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I do remember my my first Tom Tom. I don't know when it. Well, actually, it was when I moved out to Connecticut because I didn't know where the hell I was moving. Mm-hmm. And but this was kind of when this was still like a newer thing, and it was the most amazing thing ever. Like. I just have to put in an address and this just knows exactly yep. where I'm going. It was, it was pretty cool. incredible. Yeah. I remember I would just be enthralled with the like uh, arrival time. Like when I was a little kid <laughs> like, yep. trying to like, man, is are we really going to be like pulling in right as this time says? 
Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a game. Meme, like there's like a meme that goes around where it's like uh, it's like a picture of a smartphone, and then it's like on the other side of the screen, it's like all these different things, like a radio, a GPS, uh, you know, a regular cell phone, and it's like all these different things that are basically one item. You're still on the, you have a smartphone, but yet you still feel the need to have all these separate items, like Sirius Radio, uh, the Tom Tom. You just don't really quite understand that all that lives on your phone now. You don't need to have all these. Different no, I know. I, I do realize it, and that again is the generational thing. I, I do realize it, but I do get kind of stuck in in the old world. I'll admit that, and uh, you know, I'll stick. Actually, I don't have a Tom Tom. My first thing was a Tom Tom, and then I bought a second one. That's a Garmin. So I, I use oh. a Garmin right now. Upgrade a Garmin. Yeah, I upgraded, but uh, but you know, full circle. I am really good about directions. I mean, I I'm very very uh, into knowing where i'm going you know yeah. it's just my it's an instinct i have my wife doesn't have it yeah but i do i all i have to do is look at a map and i know right where i'm going and sometimes there are those rare occasions that the garmin will try to send you a, a weird route you know and i override it in my own mind and go no i'm not going that way isn't there, well, hold on isn't there a story from like three or four years ago when we went on our family vacation that you guys like got all turned around and like lost in like the hills of like west virginia or something what was no yeah no, it wasn't a fa it was a little uh vacation to the upper peninsula and we wanted to go from uh pictured rocks and cut across the northern part of the up to get to uh, Whitefish Point and the Edmund Fitzgerald Museum, right? So we're cutting across the top, cutting across the top of the UP, following my Garmin, and we get to the end of pavement, <laughs> and it takes it takes us on a two track. It's actually it had it had signs, you know, like 172, and we're in this two track going through some woods, and we got about five miles in. And all of a sudden there's some deep gullies and it looks like you could get stuck. And we finally said, you know what? We're turning around. We've seen too many date lines. We don't have any, <laughs> we don't have any food with us. We're not going to get stuck here in the upper peninsula woods. So that is the one time it did send us in a wrong path. And we, we turned around. I act, you know, me, Jared, uncle Ted, I pulled the car over once we got to back to payment and I hopped out of the car and kissed the pavement. <laughs> I was glad to be back on asphalt. <laughs> I'm imp I'm impressed that the Garmin was even working up in the UP. That's pretty I know. Cool. Well, it's good old satellites. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're going to get into uh, some NFL draft talk and see how the Lions did. Before we get to a couple spots, again, I want to welcome AZ Printing Solutions, formerly Hankered Sportswear. They're a full-service print shop that specializes in screen printing, digital printing, and embroidery. They pride themselves on a great product at a great value. The area's go-to printing solution offers 100% guarantee to exceed your expectations. AZ Printing Solutions, they have your favorite local spirit well as many as well as many other apparel items in stock. Specialty items are available for family, sports, business, and charity events. Call 989-725-2979 or stop into the store in downtown Owasso. So we'll have Lions draft talk and nfl in general right after this real real quick before we move on just a quick recap so you went you know our, oh. our new partners memorial Healthcare. the big the big news we've talked about on the podcast they have that huge amazing wellness center opening up and you went and had, kind of had a behind behind the scenes look and anyone who's listening if you haven't seen the interview hop go over to our facebook page and it's actually i i put it up on our youtube page too Ted's interview with the, the executive director of the wellness center. But yeah, that, so is it pretty legit? You got a good look at it. Oh, it's completely legit. You guys, I mean, you'd be, you would sign up in a heartbeat, Jared, if you lived in town still and Matt, this is uh top notch all the way. It's three different stories. The third story is the, the track that has uh, the kind of the rubberized floor around it. it. It takes 11 laps to do a mile. But I mean, it's perfect for you know people in my age group that want to get in there and do some walking, especially in bad weather. The second level is a world class weight room with treadmills, stair steppers, you know, uh, free weights, weight machines. They have three different rooms where they, they put on classes. They have spin class in one of them. They have yoga in another. And by the way, those classes are all inclusive in your membership. So I mean, it's it's just a great deal. And then the first floor is just beautiful state-of-the-art locker rooms showers 
uh, sauna. Each the men's and the women's locker rooms have a sauna. Uh, the showers. It's not one of those big showers where you go in and shower with a bunch of dudes. <laughs> Private showers with closed <laughs> doors. It's awesome. I, I how I picture this. So there's a very popular uh, YouTube channel called Koiski Media, where basically the guy goes to you know these all these different like he just went to Michigan State's new you know Tom Izzo football facility, and they give him like the tour of the place. I, this is almost like the the adult you know retirement type community like version of that, where Ted's getting this the lowdown of this whole setup. But man, dude, it sounds awesome. That was the one thing I was worried about. Was you know there they maybe not might not be like weightlifting type things, but you just answered. I mean, free weights. There's nothing else you need other than a few dumbbells, a couple of treadmills. If you can't figure out a good workout with that, then you're smarter than Tony Horton, who's maybe the creator of P90X, who's maybe the you know uh, smartest fitness guy that there's ever been. So that's all you need. And oh, yeah. like you said, the weather. That's the biggest thing, man. Right. You so freaking hard to exercise when it's you know January. Uh, I dealt with that this summer. You don't want to go to your crappy little local, you know, either Snap planet fitness, fitness or uh, like my apartment, like weight room complex that has one working treadmill. Like this sounds right. freaking awesome. Beautiful sites, great locker room. I mean, it's a no brainer if you're in the Owasso area. I don't know why like, I, this place should be signing up with a million memberships right now. Oh, I bet and a, they a are pool, too. a pool too, right? Absolutely. A pool that they do, uh, you know, water aerobics in it's, they use it for uh, PT, uh, it, it's just fantastic, you know. And I, even though there are corporate sponsors, I'd I'd be bragging it up anyway because yeah. it is just awesome. first class all the way. Yeah. The big thing to me, and I, I know I've talked about the like, it sounds comparable to the YMCA's down here. The Y and they're all over. There's a bunch of them, but the right. YMCA's that are just like enormous. And the big thing to me, yes, having the weights, having the machines, the stair steppers, the uh, ellipticals, and you know all that stuff are are great. But for the people who, because I mean, sometimes I I get in, you know, you get into a little bit of a, you know a lull, I guess you get kind of sick of doing your own workouts. The classes are mm -hmm. what's big. If it's included in your membership and you're getting a little bored, you know, going and just doing the elliptical every day. And, you know, maybe you got some friends who want to go do a spin class. That's what's big. And that's what, I mean, you don't want to be like a rude about it, but that's what makes it like, there's no excuse. You sign up and you got classes that are included. You got a pool, go do water aerobics. I did water aerobics with my wife when she was pregnant because it's a low impact. It's mm -hmm. a good, uh, it's a good workout. And we, we laughed because when we were there, we were definitely the youngest people there. But, um, after we left, we were like, this is actually a really good workout. So the sauna, I know we were texting about it. Saunas are fantastic. So no, that's, I, I really hope, and I, I bet they will. I hope the community gets behind it and, um, you know, supports and, you know, it's really it's really reasonable too. I mean, the rates and you know they offer a discount if a, if a husband and wife or boyfriend girlfriend do get in together, and then they also offer another discount for seniors like myself. And then the other thing that's really cool, you, you get this all inclusive sponsorship or uh, uh, membership, uh, but they do also offer individual uh, trainers to work out oh, yeah. plans for you if you want to spend a few more bucks, and you know. That also is, is good motivation because a lot yeah. of times you go in, you can't motivate yourself. Well, if you've got some some uh, trainer there pushing you, you're going to be more apt to to get more out of your workout without a doubt. So last, anyway, we're... Last thing, because I think about it, is there child care? Do they have... A... Ah, get this, Matt. Let's say you and your wife want to go there. You like this? I'm doing a good sell job. I do, man. This, yeah. is awesome. this is why they brought you in for the doer. Absolutely. That's why, <laughs> that's why I closed the deal. Uh, but by the way, before I tell you that... Uh, I'm very impressed with uh, the reaction we got when I presented our proposal and uh, the CEO of Memorial, you know, he got the, the, the information from my contact and he, he talked to her and said, man, these guys are legit. They have followers out there and they have put out a legit product. So, I mean, that's again, you know, kudos to us because it helped close the deal and got a, our first corporate sponsor on board. But to your question, Matt, if you want to go work out with your wife for a couple hours, they have a first class daycare, very, very, you know, brand new, obviously, with all kinds of areas, uh, books for kids to read and activities inside there. Go for two hours. It'll cost you four bucks a kid, two bucks an hour for daycare. Pretty good. Nice. Yeah. yeah, that again, that adds to the no excuse. You got a place to take your kids. So, this, yeah. I'm not going to like, do where was this place five years ago, man? I really don't. <laughs> I wouldn't be the out of shape guy I am today if this place was around. So. Absolutely. 
Well, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's hear a message from our friends at Memorial Healthcare and more, and then we'll be back and talk NFL draft. All right, guys, just starting this off, I know uh, you guys have some opinions on this, but the Lions uh, drafted uh, Aiden Hutchinson with their uh, number two pick and kind of came up with a surprise, the Alabama wide receiver. They moved up in the draft to take him at 12. I know, Matt, you were talking about him before we even got into the draft. Uh, Just overall thoughts on the Lions and and what they did. Yeah, I was pumped that they did that. I mean, to start off, the 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 experts, you know, basically every site out there is grading the Lions draft as either A, A plus, you know, just basically they knocked it out of the park. And the, you know, I, I know I was kind of saying like, eh, I didn't know about Hutchinson. It's mainly because I wasn't excited about the unrealistic expectations going to be put on him because of the Michigan and Michigan State fan bases. But now that he's with the Lions, He's a Detroit Lion. Hopefully he's just, you know, a, a good player. The Jamison Williams move, though, I almost wish we would have waited to do our reaction video until right. after they traded up uh, mm-hmm. to get Jamison Williams because my reaction would have been a lot different. I just, I, you know, having watched him, you know, ever since he's, he's at Alabama, he's a stud. He's the type of receiver the Lions haven't had basically since Megatron. He's a very different receiver than Megatron. And He's coming off the ACL injury, but anymore ACLs like it's almost like whatever, especially as young as he is. So hopefully that's all healthy. But the fact that they Holmes and, you know, Campbell in the Lions traded up to get him. It's just like something we haven't seen. I know we were texting about it. The Lions don't usually or at least they haven't in a while done something like that to get a player that they're excited about, that they want and that they need. You know, usually they kind of hang back or it would be for like a left tackle. They might move up a pick or two, but for them to move up 20 picks to get Jamison Williams to me, that just made me like excited that like Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell actually care about turning this thing around. You got two players and then even Pascal, the, you know, the other defensive end out of Kentucky. So the first three picks, three players that are going to come in from day one and, and start and be immediate impact players. And, you know, the big thing with Williams is as long as his knee is good. But I loved it. Those first three picks, I'm like, these are, like I said, immediate impact players that should come in right away and make the team better. I mean, so I I loved it. Yeah. Let's just talk about real quick. I I just got to bring up Hutchinson. He seems to be the real hot button issue with uh, at least people in Michigan. One, let me just throw out the pros. He's Dan Campbell reincarnated he really is it's hard, like, hard knock hard knocks is going to be great with those two. Oh, hard knocks one we saw the family uh i don't need to comment on that we don't <laughs> we all are taking men but we saw the family and oh, yeah. that whole family and aiden hutchinson believe me they're going viral on a sunday night uh come august camp that it's going they're going to have a whole little 10 minute feature on them they're going to follow him you know back to his apartment he's going to show you his hometown right nearby it's going to be a great portion of hard knocks uh, so I can't wait for that. That's going to be the star of the show. Uh, but no, I love this guy. I mean, high motor, great culture guy. Uh, he's going to work hard. You know, I feel like he's a pretty much a sure thing where he's going to be a starter in the NFL, you know, as long as injuries don't derail his career. He's going to be a starter in the NFL for 10 plus years. You know, he's a stud. Uh, I will say his interview afterward where he seemed to have forgotten that the, the Lions play in a dome was a little <laughs> bit alarming and kind of hilarious. I mean, he's a Michigan guy. Obviously, he knows they – they uh, play in a dome, just had a brain fart for a minute. Uh, and to that point, Michigan State fans were basically shitting on this guy for that. And exactly I what pretty, I was talking about. When he was drafted, State fans had a negative response to that, which we expected. But what I don't understand is, if I was, if this was a Michigan State player that was drafted, and you guys know I hate Michigan State more than anyone, I would have viewed it entirely as a you know win-win situation. If this guy's a stud, we now have a stud Lions player. If he sucks, now I'm going to laugh at, you know, how much he sucks to the Michigan or the Michigan State fans. And they just don't seem to have – they just seem to be out on this guy from the very start. And I just don't understand that. It's he. It's not like he's like, you know, some like Antonio Brown type character that is like a, a, a cancer in the locker room. Like literally just a he's a shut up and does his job type of guy. So I just don't understand the negative – feedback from state fans like literally at all you really don't you've been around long enough i mean come on that's that's the way they operate 
Yeah, they well, hate they hate, they that hate he Michigan. Took, he took <sighs> Kenneth Kenneth Walker's spot at the Heisman ceremony. They're just never going to get over that. Right. And I, I would like to say I'm with you, Jared. Like, let's just say the Lions needed a running back and they drafted Kenneth Walker. I would like to think that I'd be like, cool. Yeah, like you said, win win. They're either getting a really good running back, or we can laugh and say, "Yeah, see, this guy's a scrub." But that—that's exactly what I was talking about because some people started tweeting about that when he talked about uh, the, that. Hutchinson said, "Like he can play in all weather, Michigan weather." So right away, <laughs> people started tweeting that Michigan education. Does he not realize the Lions playing a dome? And it's like you all need to get past the whole Michigan, Michigan State thing. He might have been, yeah, maybe he had a brain fart. He might have been talking about you know, playing in Green Bay, playing in Chicago, playing, you know, some of their other games. I doubt that he doesn't know about Ford Field being a dome. You know, like, <laughs> it's just, that's the kind of stuff. Because you know, believe, but maybe. They're, they're already doing it the first time, say the first preseason game. Say he gets pancaked, you know, once or twice. Michigan State fans are going to be all over it, saying, look at this dude. Kenneth Walker ran for five touchdowns on him, and now he can't do it in – in uh, the NFL. So that that was the one thing. I'm with you, though, Jared. I think he's going to be, at minimum, he's going to be a good player. I, I'll will, be, he, I'll be, will he excel to a great player? We'll see. I'll be the first. To, it would be sort of hilarious. You can see it now, like the, the Twitter compilation. Like, he's going against Laramie Tunzel or something, some stud left tackle. And the guy is just, like, eating him eating him alive for, like, an yeah. entire game. Like, I would be there probably laughing at the that co- compilation of footage with the comments below it. But... Uh, no, which could happen. Different. Which could happen. He's he's a rookie, oh, I mean, especially first year. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Um, as for Williams, I mean, all you need to do to sell me on this guy, he's the fastest wide receiver in the draft. I mean, what else yeah. do you need? It, it's not 1980 anymore, where an ACL injury derails your career. I've been like was sort of thinking about that. How did you even play sports back in the day, Ted? Knowing you're like one <laughs> bad step away from basically like kissing your career goodbye, like that's terrifying when you think about it. Well, um, it is, you know, and I'm, I'm feeling it nowadays with uh, major arthritis at my extended age. But you know, when you think about it, you look at a guy like Billy Sims. Billy Sims came out of Oklahoma, and when he came to the Lions, it was Electric City. He was Barry Sanders before Barry Sanders, and he blew out his ACL, and it, he never was the same. You know, yeah. back then, what did they do? Did they have ACL surgery or did they just? No, they and... did, but it was it was a major surgery. You know, they yeah. had a big gash oh. scar on their knee. You know, and it's a lot less invasive nowadays the way throw they do it. A, and then they would throw on a twenty pound knee brace that even if you didn't right. have ACL surgery would slow you down uh, yep. a second in your forty yard dash anyway. Yeah, uh, but no, I love this guy. It is a great great move. You know, it took some balls. Really didn't lose any. I mean, a third round pick. Who cares? It's always a good sign when Twitter is bashing the other team that you made a trade with, which was Minnesota. So, no, I think it was a great trade. I'm not too worried about the injury. Um, I I mean, if if he keeps getting injured, there's no way to predict that. There's no way to control that. But one ACL injury, he'll be back. Sounds like he's already planning on coming back for hard knocks and for camp. So, I mean, what a great pick. Yeah. Yeah, I think overall, I mean, let's give our let's give our ratings for the Lions. I mean, out of the three point podcast scale, I'd say it's a solid uh, two point nine pushing three. I'm giving them a three because I, I think they got they got potential Pro Bowl players and they got positions of need. They need a defensive line help, and I I said it on the podcast. I think they needed a game breaking wide receiver, and they got one. So I give them a three. Yeah, I, it, great great draft. I mean, I give it a three just for the splash effect. I mean. It's not that's a that's a once like I'm just so used to the drafting of the Arkansas guard, the drafting of Hawkinson, Ebron. Finally, we had a draft night where we actually like made a splash and a consensus is that we had a great draft. So 3.0. I mean, yeah. that's the best draft I've, I've seen us have. And since we drafted, you know, Stafford or Megatron or something. There's reasons to be optimistic, I think. I mean, you know, it's, it's still uh, the Lions. It's still it's, that's it. That's very true. You know, that's what I was going to say. I mean, here we are. We're heading into the season. We got hard knocks coming up. We just had a great draft. You know, we'll see how it all unfolds as the, as their career goes. But, man, I feel really optimistic again. And, you know, you're hearing people saying this team should win uh, six games, could even win more with the right luck and maybe knock on the playoffs. You know, here we are. It's uh, it's May 5th. We're recording this. And uh, what are we thinking? You know, right here today, 
what the Lions are going to do this next season. I think at minimum, so they won three <clears throat> games last year. If they if they can't get up to the six to eight win mark, it would be a major disappointment. And mm-hmm. I mean like major disappointment. Obviously, the injury thing you can't predict. Say Goff goes down and we're stuck with Tim Boyle for the rest of the year. Okay, you can't predict that. Say Ragnow gets hurt again or Penny Sewell gets hurt. You know, injuries, you know, aside. Everyone stays healthy. If they're not in the six to nine, six to eight win mark, I think it's a major disappointment, which if they're in that range, you are kind of competing for a wild card. You know, you may be able to get up to the eight, nine, 10 win mark, you know, with a couple maybe upsets here and there. So that's what I, they, they need to be there. And if they're not, I think you can start having questions about is Dan Campbell, the guy I'm not saying fire him, but you know, with the moves they've made second year with golf, the, the, the players they already have, you need to get up to six to nine wins, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a six, seven win at maximum eight win team. Um, I still think it's just they're hindered by quarterback play, man. I mean, yeah. it's the uh, it's I'd rather I, I would trade all these pieces for Russell Wilson as crazy Ooh. as that sounds. And we'd probably win more games. Um, I the thing, my ideal season is, you know, six, seven show a lot of promise. This offense clearly has a lot of pieces. Hawkinson has a great year. Williams is, you know, a great pick. And then we just become a quarterback free agent destination. That's my goal for next year. I mean, we don't even need to draft one. Let's just, we clearly have pieces. We have the left tackle. We have studs all over at the skill positions. Let's build all around. And then just the one last empty hole is a quarterback. Let's either go get a quarterback on a rookie deal or let's lure a free agent to us. I think we're set to go for the next few years. So are you completely out then, Jared, on uh Jared Goff, I mean, you know, he did play pretty well down the stretch last year. The yeah, team I, seems to like him. Campbell likes him. Some of the experts out there think Goff can can be the, the leader of this team. You don't think there's any way he could uh, he's good. solidify himself and, and be the quarterback for the next four or five years? I think he's a good quarterback. You know, I think he deserves to be a starter in the NFL. But, I mean, think about it. If, if, we're, if our goal is to win a Super Bowl, you're not winning a – and I know what you're going to say. Oh, the he made it to the Super Bowl already. That Rams team was so – that was like a perfectly loaded team, and they basically did exactly what I explained, which is they p- built all the pieces around the quarterback, then a free agent came in – and or they made a trade, excuse me, and they they exploded. I It I happens. A quarterback, but, man, it's just like you're talking about we're going to be facing, you know, Josh Allen, you know, Patrick Mahomes of the world, Russell Wilson's. I, uh, there's so many freaking elite quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson's it's like we're not going to win against those teams in the playoffs yeah but the big problem with the Lions is how do you get one of those kind of quarterbacks I mean if you're if you're sitting there right now with Jared Goff as your quarterback and you have all the skill position players lined up on offense it looks like they've really improved their defense I mean why can't they make a run with him in the next couple of years similar to what the Eagles did with uh, Nick Foles well, the Nick that, Foles thing, that was just like uh, he he came in off an injury, right? Carson Wentz was the guy. He did, yeah. yeah. And yeah, we definitely don't have a Nick Foles as a backup. So that, that's a different story. You don't even. You don't even no, but yeah. compare Nick compare Nick Foles as a starter Here's to the Jared thing. Goff. The Eagles right. team had magic. I think man. that's fair. They were yeah. the number one team heading into playoffs before Nick Foles ever even took them over, so they had home field advantage. The city of Philly was on fire. Uh, their freaking offensive line was probably maybe the best offensive line we've seen in like 10 years. I mean, that team was loaded. And Nick Foles was a has proven more than Jared Goff ever has. I mean, Nick Foles had a great year with the Eagles, uh, you know, when Michael Vick went down and he was a proven vet. Jared Goff is – he's okay, but he's not He's not going to be going off for 50 points in the Super Bowl. He just doesn't have that in him. He's, <laughs> like, not, a pro- he's, not, a, he's not a proven vet is what you're saying. Yeah, and I mean Nick Foles had so many flashes before that that Jared Goff hasn't really had those flashes. I'm not. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm. You can't point I to Nick Foles. Also, that's such a like one in a million situation, and that was a offensive guru as a head coach. Right. That, and it was just Trent, really Trent Trent Dilfer. Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl. There's the other yeah. one in a million that people throw out. The best. Well, they're, they're, they're facts. Ever you around got... in the 2000s, it's not even the same game anymore. But they're facts. They're facts. Right. I mean, it's the Lions the seem to have Lions have seemed to built all their positions, and Jared Goff is not as bad as I think you are pointing him out to be. That's all. You'll see. Well, let's see. <laughs> you know, and we've talked about it before. Okay, let's look at another proven quarterback like Baker Mayfield. Is it he's got too much baggage or what? 
Would you yeah. rather have Baker Mayfield or Jared Goff? I don't want Baker either. Baker Why? is Why? He, he's cuz it's like it's maybe at best he's a small improvement over Goff with all the bullshit off the field. I don't need it. There's no reason to bring him in. <laughs> yeah, but what's your solution? Uh, how are you, you're saying get a free agent or draft somebody. Yeah, we're just going to continue Baker. this cycle. No, it, we're not. We finally have a – the Lions have been horrendous. Now we actually have, like, something that might lure a quarterback. Hmm. Now let's just go out and get one. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> what they need, that's what they need to do is hopefully if, – if Goff ends up not being the guy, I lean a little more with Jared, maybe not as extreme – but I don't. I don't think golf is the guy. We'll see. He has no. Well, throw some this names. Year. Throw some names out. Who are you talking about? Well, yeah. Any any of the free contract. agents that might come up next year. I mean, we this this year we saw Russell Wilson leave. We saw Matt Ryan. We saw Carson Wentz. I mean, he can't stay healthy. But quarterbacks are just going all over the place, and I think that's what will happen. Yeah, right now the Lions are not a free agent destination uh, for quarterbacks, just mm-hmm. mostly because it's the Lions. But let's just say this year they show. You know, and hard knocks may help. Hard knocks may help. They people might see Dan Campbell's a great dude to play for. Say they improve. Hawkinson's a stud. Say Jamison Williams is like, holy crap, he looks like the next Jamar Chase. Say the offensive line is protecting Goff, but Goff just kind of can't get there. Who knows? Maybe, maybe there is a free agent, uh, a quarterback that wants to leave their current situation. You know. I don't can't think of any names right now who who might be free agents because there there was a lot of movement, but you know maybe you know someone like a, a Dak Prescott right. or something like that if he wants to leave the Cowboys or you know I, you know someone like that who knows but personally I I would rather if Jared Goff isn't the guy if he has a good year then cool you roll with him you know um, I'm kind of holding right. out that they can they can somehow swing a deal to get Bryce Young. You know, when he comes out of Alabama, but then, but then we're back to starting a rookie quarterback and you have no idea about that. So I think that hopefully that's what the lions can do is, is show Dan Campbell is a good coach and they've got some potential on offense with, with the offensive line, with the skill players, with the running backs. But if dudes get hurt and we're back to four five, six wins, no free agent quarterback is going to want to come to Detroit, you know? So that, that, that's the big thing. I, th- I think golf, I think golf, I, I keep, I always call him serviceable. I, I think with the right players around him, I think you can, you could get to a Super Bowl with him. I mean, he has been to a Super Bowl. He's, he's good enough yeah. because you throw out guys, even like Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco made a crazy run in the yeah. playoffs and, and won a Super Bowl. You know, you, you got to have everything else. The defense needs to improve is a big thing. They, they need to really improve the defense too. And Dan Campbell is going to be a big key. Oh, yeah. See, yep. see what he can do. Yep. This, this season, like last year, we were like, "What? there's nothing to root for. This season has a lot of, like, things to keep your eye on. I mean, Dan Campbell, he's going to be the center of controversy, either good or bad. I, I don't yep. I, I really don't know what to expect. You know there's going to be a couple bonehead decisions along the ride, but you just hope that the culture and the players loving him and the players playing hard is enough to make up for those mistakes. We'll see. There, there is. You're, you're right. There's a lot of storylines because last year, yeah, it was. First year, Dan Campbell, the roster wasn't that good. So it was just like, let's see what the hell this Dan Campbell thing is all about. Now, I honestly think there's no excuses. He's in his second year as a head coach. He has been a head coach before this, but the, the roster on offense is actually really good. I mean, a lot of people are talking about the Lions might have the best offensive line in the NFL. You've got legitimate skill players. Hawkinson's a pro bowler. St. Brown looked like a legitimate, you know, slot number two receiver. Jamison Williams, you drafted him at number 12 to be a number one. So he, he's got to be there. The running backs have been good as long as they can stay healthy. So on offense, there is zero excuses for them to be good. Defense is the big thing. Will Okuda come back and be healthy? You know, will the two de- defensive ends? Out. Right. Will the two defensive ends they drafted actually, you know, pan out? Um linebackers obviously is a question so the defense but any more in the nfl i just think you just need like a solid defense you don't need to have that that baltimore ravens defense with trent dilfer you don't need to have what the 85 bears you you know like if your defense is at least like good enough but your offense can score 30 a game you're good to go and i will say this seems like the first like training camp that the lions have had like positive buzz since what, like one of the the Caldwell years? It, it just, yeah, it's, it's been a long time, long time coming. So yeah. let's see. Hopefully they don't 
I mean, in Lions fashion, they probably will break our hearts in some way. <laughs> up winning three games or injuries will be all over the place and Campbell will flame out in eight games. But I, I don't know. At this point in time, it's a good time to be a Lions fan. It <laughs> sure is. And, and hopefully, I think the number one thing is injuries. You know, I think if yeah. they do, and, and that's the thing in the NFL, you got to stay healthy and it's yep. tough. But I think they definitely have enough talent to make a move, and and there's reason for us to be optimistic, and we have to be optimistic because we're Lions fans, you know. I mean, that's all. We, that's all we got yeah. yep. until, until they burst our bubble and the Kool Aid turns a different color than blue. But uh, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> I can't wait for Hard Knocks, and uh, we'll be definitely getting more into Lions talk and NFL because that seems to be, you know, when we get a little closer to fall, it's gonna be college football and. And NFL and the Lions are going to be a big topic for us here at Three Point Podcast. Well, we're going to take another short break and finish up the show with a little bit of sports potpourri as there's a few other interesting topics going on. And uh, we'll pick Jared's brain on the Tigers as well. We'll be right back after this. Well, I set it up a little bit there, Jared. I know you uh, yesterday we couldn't record uh, because you were working the twin bill against the Pirates. And, you know, Tigers are kind of shuffling along as we record this or eight and 15. Uh, Astros next up. But uh, the one thing that disturbs me watching this team play is their their defense at times. They just they really falter on D, you know, and that's hurting them a lot, especially with a kind of a, a pitching staff that, they, they rely on the guys to pick up right. the ball and, and get out. What, what's your thoughts, especially being down there in the middle of battle? Uh, I just think it's, you know, it very slow starts the season on offense. The bats are really struggling. I mean, Miguel Guerrero is our best oh, batter for, I feel like, the first month, other than yeah. Javier Baez, who was in and out of the lineup uh, with a 10-day injury. But Austin no, I Meadows has been pretty good, but yeah, otherwise. We're still waiting for Riley Green to come in. Hopefully he can bring a little bit of spark uh, to the offense. Spencer Torkelson, the more and more he gets settled in, uh, I have no worries about him being a good player in the MLB. Um, but, no, and the one positive I'll, I'll throw out there so far in the season is uh, outside of the injuries to the pitching staff is this new newcomer, I mean, Bo Brisky. Uh, yeah. He started two games. There's been, And he's had good starts in both games where basically it's like he's pitched almost perfect, and then he has like – a couple of home run balls that are solo shots that have kind of gotten away from him. But other than that, he's been pitching his, his balls off. And I love his, uh, if you see the interviews with him, I mean, he just seems like a real great guy, like a uh, real person. And uh, I love his, his, uh, his uh, mindset, which is basically like, Hey, I, I'll see what happens. You know, I'm going to go out after these guys and I'm going to attack them. Uh, I trust my stuff. Uh, we'll see what happens. And it's worked so far. You know, he just kind of came in with his balls on fire and he's been pitching well. So that's another young arm uh, that we're adding to the staff. And then Alex Fado, uh, which I know Matt seems to be, it's like his, his guy from the SEC. Uh, he finally got his first start yesterday and he looked good as well. I mean, he gave up two runs in, in five <laughs> innings, uh, but you know, solid, solid first start. So I think the young pitching staff, I really do think of that in a year or two. I know we I know we kind of wanted to make the playoffs this year, and that's still on the table. But I really do think that in one or two years, this could be one of the best staffs in baseball. If they keep developing and stay out of the injury uh portal, that I think they're gonna be set. Yeah, yeah. Alex Fiedo, just to mention what, what you were pointing out, I did like four of his starts. We his games he played at Florida in college. Mm-hmm. So I just because of my job, I watched like four, five, six of his starts like up close and personal. So that's yeah. why when the when the Tigers drafted him, I was excited. So hopefully he can turn into a solid uh, starting pitcher because you know the starting pitching has been okay. It, it's been a little up and down, like you said. There's been a few bright spots. The bullpen actually has been really good. It's just a yeah. shame because a lot of times when the bullpen comes down comes in they're already down four or five runs or whatever. So the bullpen has been holding strong. The starting pitching hasn't been that great. And then the offense has been awful, really, if we're being honest. Yeah. Like looking at looking at the overall batting averages, I think, at least yesterday, I think Austin Meadows was the only guy hitting over 300. Even as good as Miggy's been, he's kind of dipped down into like the 280s. So yeah. the last in home runs, I'm pretty sure they're like last in RBIs or towards the bottom anyway in RBIs. So, you know, it, Javi Bias has been pretty good. Like I said, Austin Meadows has been pretty good. I think Miggy is who he is anymore. He's going to hit for average. He's not going to hit 35 home runs anymore. So you just got to hope he can drive in runs when there's guys in scoring position. But the, uh, I don't know, man. It, it, I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm still excited. I'm still watching the games and stuff. But it's been a little disappointing, to be honest with you. 
because Hinch is a good manager and they made some moves. And it's just like you said, Ted, the defense, it, like, what was it? That game against the, the twins, they had a one, oh. they had a one yeah. in the ninth inning. All they had to do was close it out. And they look like, they look like my team at the fenced infield at Elsa Meyer in fourth grade, throwing the ball all over the field and, you know, gave the game away to the twins. And it's like, Hey man, I know errors happen. People aren't perfect, but you guys are major leaguers. Like you should not be making plays like this. And it's stuff like that. That makes you go, are we in for another 60 win season? You know, that that's the kind of thing. So mm-hmm. hopefully what, they can get things turned around and get things going. You guys both brought up good points on the offense. I guess what you just brought up, Matt, that clown shell play that against the twins. I mean, you just don't see that at major league level. And then a few games prior to that, there was a pop-up on the infield and the pitcher for some God unknown reason he, he called off the infielders and dropped a pop-up on the infield. I mean, that, that just doesn't happen. That's, that's little league one Oh one pitchers do not catch pop-ups. Yep. First base, third base, or even the catcher, you got to wave off the pitcher, but Hey, yeah. they got a few things to shore up. Uh, if they can somehow start nudging their way closer to 500 and with the weather breaks a little bit, they still could make some noise, but uh, they do have some things they got to clean up. And Jared's point on the young pitchers, I mean, very well taken. I mean, their, their future looks really good. If they stay healthy and the arms stay healthy, they got some decent young pitching talent coming up. And this is a, this is going to be a fun team to watch the next four or five years. I think they've also had one of the tougher, this isn't an excuse, but they, they, they started off with one of the tougher schedules in the bigs. So, I mean, they've been playing a lot of the better or best teams in the major leagues. So hopefully that'll mm-hmm. even out a little bit. And they just need to get healthy, get on a Absolutely. little roll, you know, and, and the weather. They've been playing in a lot of kind of crappy weather in Detroit, too. So. Yeah. When it warms up, we'll see. I mean, like I said, I still think we have one of the best, maybe the best manager, manager in all of baseball. I'm not worried about. Uh, you know, this team getting the bats going and kind of, you know, we're, he's going to get the best out of them. Whatever this team, whatever you think it is, he's going to get the best out of them. So I'm not worried about that. Uh, one last th- thought I had on uh, Breeski, why I like him so much. I mean, start number two of his young career, it's Saturday night baseball, you know, versus the LA Dodgers against Clayton Kershaw, 50,000 people in the stands. That was uh, awesome. He him, and he outdueled him. And I just, I just, something about that guy. He's got something to him and I like it. So I yeah. just keep it, just remember him as the season progresses that uh, I've been very impressed with him so far. I think chomping, that was the game of the year. Chomping yeah. on that gum out there on the mound. And he's just, he's like, you're the definition of like a no nonsense pitcher, you know, like just goes out there and throws his stuff. Like you said, trusts his stuff and just does what he has to do. Yeah. Well, it is potpourri here time on this segment. And uh, we're going to talk some NBA playoffs, but before we do it, Jared, have you done any studying at all mm-hmm. on the Kentucky Derby coming up this weekend? So as you guys no know, Baffert, Matt, right? no Baffert, right? No Baffert. So what are you, what are you yes. going to do, Jared? Oh, he's still got a couple horses in the race that he's not quote unquote training. That is uh, basically his young apprentice is uh, training. They're going off at, uh, let me, I, I'm blanking on their names right now. Uh, at, I think it's uh, eight, eight, eight to one and 12 to one are the uh, two odds of those guys. Uh, let me pull up the uh, horse odds real quick, but no, I love the Derby. It honestly, it stuck, snuck up on me this year. Uh, but it, it's still the greatest, you know, betting event of the year, in my opinion. Uh, I still love it. And, I mean, you guys know me. Baffert still has his hand in there somewhere, some way. So, I'm leaning toward those two guys uh, at 12-1 to 1 and 8-1. to 1. Let's see. Let me pull up their names one second. Yeah, I was going to say, ho- hopefully your schedule will, will loosen up down the road the next couple of years. Maybe a, maybe a road trip to the Derby. I know that's, uh, that's on your bucket list to go actually 100%. watch it live, right? Yeah. Yes, my favorite horse right here, Massier, Bob Baffert. Uh, Tim, in the hands of Tim Yachton, which I believe is like basically the best uh, jockey that there is. Uh, the guy wins every year. So Messier, I love him at uh, 8-1. to Look at Ted Ted taking notes. No, I, I was just going to ask you, where's Zandon? <laughs> I, I saw something Zandon, on that. Three to one. I, a horse named Zandon does not win the Kentucky <laughs> It's like Tis the Law from a couple of years ago. It's, it's just, I can't picture it. So okay. I'll have a I three to one, but I just don't like it. I see how you bet. It's based it is, on their name. <laughs> it is the best because of stuff like that. It is the best betting event, you know, how you worded it, Jared, of the year. Because yes, there is some, you know, knowledge. You know, you can know the kind of horse, the kind of track, what the weather's gonna be like, the trainers, the jockey. Yes, there there are some people who know that kind of stuff. 
But if you have absolutely no idea and you just want to have some fun and throw some money down, you can look at the horses and say, hey, cool, that that's a cool name. I'm going to bet on that one mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever. So that that's why it's fun, you know, and you don't have to throw around a lot. You got a horse at 12 to one. Yeah, put 20 bucks down and win a little bit of money if they win. So it, it is fun. I might have to text you and say, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you some money and say, do what you think is best. Yeah, well, what's scary is you're following me. I'm following my buddy who last year, you know, won a grand uh, betting betting uh, hundred bucks on on a Bob Baffert horse. So I, we're basically we're following an idiot. So just that, <laughs> you're, you're doing that. Uh, if you want to follow my picks, man, I'm following an idiot. So <laughs> that's fair enough. Well, we're looking forward to that uh, this Saturday. But uh, you know, before we wrap up the program, guys. <clears throat> You know, the NBA playoffs are now really cranking into gear full time here. And, uh, you know, it's it's looking more and more like it's going to be Phoenix and Golden State out west, though. I have to say Memphis and John Morant. I mean, that that kid can play ball, man. He is uh, he's a superstar, man. He just has it all. Yeah, that series is going to be fun. I mean, the Suns look like they're going to the, – the Mavs are good, but, you know, they, it's basically Luka and whoever else. Mm. But the Suns, the Suns are going to win that series. And it's looking like the Warriors and, and Grizzlies, it's kind of the same over in the East. It looks like the Heat are going to run away from the Sixers and win that. But the yeah. other series, you know, Boston and Milwaukee, looks like it could go six or seven. So that, that'll be a good series. But, yeah, that, that Memphis and Warriors series is going to be fun because it's almost like – it's like two different styles of basketball. Yeah, you got John Morant, but the Grizzlies are really just like a hard nosed, tough defense. You know, they're going to come after you. And then you got the Warriors that are just like insanely efficient on offense and just so skilled. And I, you know, I, I think a lot of people thought that the Grizzlies were maybe like a year or two away from being good. That the Warriors were going to kind of you know show them who was the boss. And they're not backing down. And you know, with a guy like John Morant, it's awesome. So. That series, I mean, it's at 1-1 right now as we record. So, I mean, going back to – well, actually going back to uh, Golden State now. But it's going to be uh, – that could go six or seven. That's going to be a fun series. Yeah, that's the best series of this round. I yeah. mean, Ted, you got to be loving this Grizzlies, you know, how they play. Some say it's dirty. Some say it's, you know, just physical play. And then you got Draymond going back and forth. I mean, that's that's a series right out of 1980. Um, it is. one. <laughs> Uh, so I know you're loving that. I still think the Warriors are going to end up winning that. I think yeah. the Grizzlies, I just trust the Warriors' offense a lot more. Uh, yeah. And the fact yeah. that the Warriors already got one at uh, in Memphis, I just think that they're going to end up pulling away. Same thing, I think the Bucks. I think Boston's a damn good team. But I just think when Giannis really wants to, and especially when you get home court advantage with those guys like Bobby Portis and Lopez, who just seemingly feed off the crowd, I think that once they get back, uh, to Milwaukee, I really do think they might take a three-one uh, series lead. So I think M- Milwaukee's going to end up winning that series as well. But man, the Suns, uh, Matt, don't think you got lucky. And I'm not going to bring up CP3, man. The guy's turning back the clocks. They look damn good. He basically a single-handedly uh, got them through New Orleans. And let me just say, I think that maybe the hottest coaching guy coming up the ranks right now is Willie Green of the New Orleans Pelicans. I love that guy. Uh, he's he just seems to really click with the players. CP3 was almost in tears. Uh, from t- he used to play with them when they were talking, you know, after the game, uh, when they finally knocked out the Pelicans. But Suns are rolling, they finally got Devin Booker back, seemingly like I thought, like two weeks earlier than I thought he was supposed to. Uh, so I love the Suns, uh, coming out of the West, but no, I, it's it's been a great playoffs. I mean, injuries have really plagued it. What a bummer the Sixers Heat series has become. I mean, yeah, yeah, all the series if Embiid was playing, I mean, I don't, it doesn't even seem like they really have a timetable for his return. If he's not back in game three, they're going to go down 3-0. And then at that point, you might as well just shut him down. Yeah, yeah. it's over. Uh, yeah, you, you know, some – any credit. What, what, like the Heat, I mean, what a they have a damn good roster. Hero, Lowry, Lowry's who's banged up right now. Butler, Bam out of bio. Great coaching staff, great culture. Duncan I mean, Robinson. Much credit. Yeah. No, the Heat are good. Um, but, yeah, I, they, you know, I think we're seeing that James Harden. I mean, I've, I've ripped on him enough on this podcast. He's maybe just a little past his prime. But, you know, people say, like, you make excuses about injuries. Joel Embiid being hurt is not an excuse. You lose you lose a guy that could be the MVP of the league. You're not really going to recover from that in the second round of the playoffs. Even if James Harden turned back the clocks 10 years and went back to his prime, it still wouldn't be enough to beat the Heat. So if Embiid doesn't come back, I mean, the Sixers have no chance. 
yeah, CP3, you know, whatever. He's playing well. We'll see if he can do it in the Western Conference Finals. If if the if the Warriors know. are fully healthy, and it, let, let's see if he can do it there. So, God, I just can't stand watching. How watch old is CP3. he? Is he 37? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing in itself. But uh, he's played a lot of basketball too because he's in the playoffs a lot. So, how do you not put him as like a top 10, 15 guy? I mean, when you really think about a playoff series and you know what he brings to a team, I mean, he's got to be up there. I don't know how you because of that. I think it's because of that. He hasn't had the playoff success. He's won like series here and there, but you know, last year was his first time getting to the finals. So, I I think that's he was on some loaded um, Clippers teams. He was on some a couple loaded Rockets teams, and they he just couldn't take them over the top. And Ted knows why, because if he's good, he, Isaiah Thomas, you're gonna go and win a title. If you want to be a ten or top ten or fifteen guy as a point guard, Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, even you put Steph Curry in that conversation, you're gonna go win a title. And CP3 hasn't done it. So all three of them are definitely ahead of CP3 without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Unbelievable. It is. <laughs> yeah, how, how can you argue it? Yeah. How, yeah, how do you argue that? It falls his yeah. Clippers stuff. I mean, maybe one of those series you could say falls on CP3, but I mean, look at who he hitched his wagon to. His loaded team of Doc Rivers, who's a known playoff basically failure, looking at it right now this year. Uh, Blake Griffin, talented, sure, but <laughs> we don't need to get into the actual culture that he brings to a team. DeAndre Jordan, I mean, are centers even around in the league anymore? So it's like this team finally has like the pieces around him. If he doesn't win it, win it this year, hundred percent, you can say that, but you can't say that right now when they're looking as good as they are and he's rolling, he's leading the charge. Yeah. Good luck to him. We'll see what happens. We got, <laughs> good we got... luck to him. <laughs> Will, Willie green, by the way, Willie green straight from Detroit went to Detroit yeah. mercy. So it, it is cool to see him. Um, you know, yeah. I, yeah. Well, actually I was going to say, I, I'd be curious to see what he does. The Pelicans are actually like up and coming. I was going to say, like, what his next coaching move will be. Maybe he stays there. Oh, yeah. You know, with Brand- Brandon Ingram and Zion and stuff, that, that's going to be a good team. But, no. you know, this Playoffs. is completely completely off topic, but it's it just bugs me. Uh, you know, the Cleveland Browns did it. They kept their name. I mean, what in the hell? The, the Utah Jazz, I mean, really? Right. Why isn't it New Orleans Jazz? Give them back their name. And and name Utah something different. It's just ridiculous. The they had, they go to Pelicans. Well, that's that's a ferocious mascot, jazz, isn't it? Jazz, I, I don't blame them for that. That's an awesome name. I don't care if it's in Utah or what. The, jazz, the Utah Jazz, it's awesome. It is, but oh, it, but it belongs in New Orleans. Is where it belongs. The, the funny thing about it too, I mean, they've changed their uniforms, but they used to have like the mount the mountains of Utah and their uniform, but they're the Jazz. So it was like this doesn't make any cool. sense. <laughs> Those uniforms, they're I, like, I mean, don't even get me started. They have these new uniforms that are oh, like yeah. electric yellow that they're unveiling next year. I mean, they're horrible. Awful. For that reason alone, they should have to forfeit the name Jazz. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, if you're going to say that, the Lakers should give up the Lakers name. But it, it's too strong of a name, so they weren't going to do that. Yeah. Well, at least it flows. Los Angeles Lakers, you know, it started Utah. with the Minneapolis Lakers. but Utah Jazz, I, it's... it's uh. They just rolled again. Maybe it didn't when they first moved there, but that's all I've ever known. Okay. Well, that, that's fair argument, I guess. But uh, it just bugs me, man. It belongs in New Orleans. All right, guys. That's because hey. we're used to the Detroit Pistons. I mean, that just makes complete sense. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And they're on a roll. They're going to be back before you know it. Right, Jared? Yeah. All I, right. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't either. Well, let's uh, let's call it a podcast, fellas. Uh, we've talked enough. I think we had another fun show. All our listeners out there, make sure you follow us at Three Point Pod. And remember, this has been the Three Point Podcast presented by Memorial Healthcare, home of the now Community Wellness Center. If you're in Shiawassee County area or the surrounding area, get on in there and sign up for a membership. And also make sure you let all our partners know you listen in and enjoy the show. They include brand new on board, AZ Printing. We appreciate them hopping on along with Pro Real Estate and Auction, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill, Success Group Mortgage and Servicing, the Wash of Owasso, and the ALS Association of Michigan. Until next time, so long everybody and uh, stay strong Ukraine.